What's up you guys, it is Jagbeck filming another video for you guys. So, welcome back to Room C200 where we host the Baking Club, aka the Gay Sex Ed Club. You guys had a long break from these Gay Sex Ed videos and I'm sure your brains are just like, where's the knowledge? We are empty, Jack. Fill us with gay sex ed knowledge. So I'm back here to deliver. And this week's video is going to be about the horrible history of gay conversion therapy. Yes, there's a weird, eerie backstory and origin surrounding gay conversion therapy. And fun fact, uh, well, it's not fun. It's uh, actually a horrible fact. But anyway, gay conversion therapy is still legal in 35 of the 50 states in the U.S. 35 of the 50 states you can send your minor to a gay conversion camp just last week there was like massive controversy over the fact that in the google play store there was an app about praying the gay away and everyone was mad about it and i'm not sure if it's still there it may have been taken down uh, i'm an iphone user so i couldn't download it even if i wanted to so uh rats you know i missed out on that opportunity the opportunity of a lifetime but anyway people to this day still think you can pray the gay away and yeah that has resulted in a lot of weird shit going down over the years. So without further ado, let's get right into it, guys. Here's the penis. Now when something excites you sexually, this penis goes up with blood. And ejaculation. So let's get right into it. Eugene Steinek. Who's that? You may wonder. Well, I'll tell you. I'm surprised we don't have statues of him all around town. He was a pioneer when it came to gay conversion therapy. And his hypothesis back in the day was that if a gay man came to him, he could cure them by removing the gay man's gay testicles and replacing them with the testicles of a dead straight guy. Yeah. That was his little method, and spoiler alert, it failed, and he was probably like, rats, you know, foiled again. But also, in the early 1900s, there was this other method of curing homosexuality called bladder washing, where they would inject a catheter in a gay man and try to rinse out his bladder with like a silver or nitrate solution. I don't know what that really means, but Science Fair 2019, anyone? Sounds like a nice little fun, quirky experiment for you get an A plus to bring up your GPA, so you're welcome. Anyway, moving on, in the 1950s, there was this guy named Edmund Burglar, uh, who may or may not have been related to the Hamburglar, but he was like, y'all are amateurs, okay? I found out finally a way to cure homosexuality foolproof very easily. You know what I'll do? I'll punish them through confrontational therapy. So yes, that was his method, and he reportedly bullied his gay patients, called them liars, and told them they were worthless. <laughs> Moving right along, 1969 was the year that things actually really started changing. That was when they, yes, 69, ha ha. <laughs> Let's all giggle, 69. But anyway, the human rights movement really picked up steam, and by the 70s, because no one had ever managed to cure homosexuality, it was no longer considered a mental illness. So yeah, no longer a mental illness. Um, just disgusting to the vast majority of the population and something that the gay men should be ashamed of, but not a mental illness, so. But that was the 70s, and in the 80s and the 90s, Christian rights movements appeared. They came out of their backwoods, and they were like, fuck you all, okay? You don't know what you're doing. Gays can be cured, but they're not gonna be cured through castration. They're not gonna be cured through bladder washing. The cure that they need is free. The Holy Spirit, praise the Holy Ghost. So, in the year 1989, Christian rights groups apparently spent half a million dollars advertising gay conversion therapy. Half a million dollars. And this is when we saw the emergence of gay conversion camps looking from the outside just like any other summer camp you would attend with lakes, cabins, picnic tables. So what were the methods used at these camps, you may wonder? Okay, I'm about to go through the methods of curing homosexuality. Some of these methods were really dumb. For example, prayer, song, Bible study, okay? Those were some of the methods, and when those didn't work, shocker, more advanced methods were used. For example, defeminization procedures. They would take boys and remove any female role model from their life, whether that was their mother, 
their grandmother, their sister. And the thought process behind this was that if they took away female influences, these gay boys would only have men to look up to, so therefore they'd only want to mimic what they saw men doing. There were also drug treatments. These boys were given Viagra and then shown like naked women or women in magazines in the hope that they would get erections when looking at these women and link, oh, I'm turned on by these hot boobs. Additionally, they used theater. Yes, theater. Boys were encouraged to talk about the traumas that made them gay, sometimes even acting it out. Can you imagine me acting out a trauma that turned me gay? Those counselors would rue the day they ever gave me a microphone. I'd take center stage for my Broadway debut. Is this mic on, everyone? A large feather boa around my neck. One spotlight above me, all eyes on me. I'd convert the counselors to homosexuality. I'd, a real sexual conversion would happen in that room. Moving on, you guys, let's think. Christians have used what since the dawn of time? It starts with a V. Um, let's play hangman to guess the word I'm thinking of. No, I'll just tell you. Violence. So these camps did sometimes use violence, and some of the more violent methods were nausea-inducing drugs. I'm not saying this is, like, really violent, but boys were given drugs that would make them throw up. And as they were throwing up, they were shown images of, like, this darling photo of shirtless Ansel Elgort. They'd be shown this while they were getting sick, so their brain would link, like, naked boy to nausea. Additionally, they would do the same thing with, like, electroshock therapy. They'd show, like, this... Darling photo of Noah Sugar, and they would shock them, whether it was on their genitals or their head, so that the boy would link pain to Darling Noah Sugar. Lastly, there was this thing called the rubber band technique, which I think this was at like the low budget camps that couldn't afford electrodes or like nausea drugs, but they would show like Darling Sean, a shirtless Darling Sean to boys, and they would put a rubber band around the boys' wrists and snap it if they ever got turned on. But yeah, I, it's like weird. I. I, literally, first of all, teenage boys get turned on by like a photo of a damn lamp. So like, I feel like anything would turn boys on. But anyway, I, for example, like now, since I'm not like horny and 14, I don't get turned on by like singing guys dick. So I don't, they would literally show like a guy's balls and I wouldn't, I'd be like, eh, whatever. And they'd be like, he's cute. But then they'd accidentally show like a guy's legs and I'd be like, well, I better start snapping that band. One final method I want to talk about in regard to like gay to straight conversion was the ice pick lobotomy, okay? I'm sure some of you guys have heard a little bit about lobotomies. This is crazy, actually insane. There was a guy named Walter Freeman. He performed as many as 2,500 ice pick lobotomies, okay? And apparently 40% of his patients, up to 40%, were gay men that were meant to be converted to straight after the procedure. So he had no surgical training. Keep that in mind. He didn't know what he was doing. He was just performing these lobotomies because he initially experimented on, like, dead people. Like, he experimented on some dead people and thought, well, hey, I guess I can move on to living people. Ooh. So, like, that's what he did, okay? So let's talk about what the ice pick lobotomy is. This is an ice pick. For those of you guys, I don't even know, what do we use ice picks for? What did we use? Smashing ice? Is We really needed that much ice? What is this, frozen? Like, how much ice do we have to smash? But anyway, this is an ice pick, okay? And this guy named Walter Freeman would take one of these ice picks, okay? And there's a spot above your eye, between the top of your eye and the brow bone, that if you stick something in there, you'll hit the brain. He believed mental illness was contained in the frontal lobe. So, he thought that if he put a patient under and took an ice pick and jabbed it between the eye and the brow bone and just cut into the brain with it, he would eventually cure the patient of whatever their ailment was. And all that happened was the majority of his patients were left severely disabled for the rest of their lives. Woo! You know, it's just crazy. People were fucking crazy back in the day with their just jabbing shit in. What, what are you doing? Like, I don't let anything near me. Like, get away. If you have a sharp object, even a dick, get away from me. I don't let it near me. But anyway, yeah, that was the ice pick lobotomy. And that's the history of gay conversion therapy. Crazy. So bizarre. And yeah, it's still legal in 3550 states. Not ice pick lobotomies. They're not the thing anymore. But yeah, it is still legal to send your minor to a camp where they will try to cure them of their homosexuality through song and theater. 
and singing. I don't think they can abuse you in any way, shape, or form. I think electroshock therapy is done. I'm almost positive it's done. But I mean, some of these camps are underground. Some people go to like great lengths where there's still like abuse in them and stuff like that. Very strange. So yeah, I mean, 35, 50 states, it's still legal to try to change your minor sexual orientation at a camp. That's that on this video. I hope you guys liked it. Comment below with your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed learning for once. Not for once. Wow, I just really insulted you guys. I mean like on this channel. Anyway, follow me on Instagram at jmerity. My Twitter is officialjackm. I love you guys so, so much. So, so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Ooh, mask.